Well, hello once again, my favorite motherfuckers. And of course, motherfuckies. Um, it's time for my second favorite part of the show where I'll be giving a short reading from the Bible of how to do sex. And the Bible of sex is, of course, Sandra Martin's Emerald Fire from the Mills and Boone series. Set deep in the Puerto Rican jungle, the land of hotness and skin irritation. Could we have a little bit of light and music to set the mood? Page 120. She trembled as he traced the fullness of her flesh, first with his hands, then with his lips. He rubbed his cheek against the tender skin. It was days since he'd shaved. His beard was soft, feathery light. It's touched so electrifying that she cried out, ah! 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 Mm. He touched his tongue to one rosy red crested nipple and she held her breath. <gasps> waiting for the moment when he would take a deeper, hungrier taste. When he did, when his teeth closed lightly on the puckered bud, flame shot through Bryony's body and pooled like liquid fire between her thighs. Which is a good result. I want that liquid fire early in the game. Sweeter, he whispered. Sweeter than honey. It's a strong opening line. I don't know if that would be my first choice. He moved up over her, kissing her mouth while his hand slipped over her belly. He undid the button at her waistband and she whimpered as his fingers slid down and down. And finally his thumb stroked against her nylon-covered flesh and she arched against his finger. Well, I don't mean to be pedantic, but which digit is it? I mean, it's a very... Look, if you want my opinion, I think the thumb is the more comfortable and ergonomic position to work from. There's more movement in the thumb joint itself, but most importantly, more surface area on the thumb, which allows for a better purchase on the bean. And she arched against his thumb and cried out his name, Slade! Oh, oh you know you're gonna get fucked good when Slade's in the house. She watched as his hands went to his jeans. Slowly he slid them from his body. He was perfect, as she had known he would be. The broad shoulders and muscled chest tapered to a narrow waist and hips. His legs were long and muscular. And his sex was proud and exciting, rising from the mountain of dark, luscious hair that surrounded it. You know what I'm talking about, Beardy, don't you? <laughs> no clippers in your house. I like that about you. I call you the double beard. That's who you are. You're beautiful, she whispered, and he smiled. <laughs> he ran his hands over her again as if to memorize every soft curve. Gently, he parted her thighs. He kissed the softness of her skin, breathed in her scent, buried his face against her and kissed her intimately until again she cried out his name. Well, good on you, and well done you gents for getting involved in that as well. I'm not sure where you see yourself in this particular interaction, maybe just hiding behind a fern somewhere, cheering him on. In there, very good. Very dexterous, Slade, very dexterous. Briny arched toward him in ecstasy. She reached for him, needing to touch him as he was touching her. Her fingers curled around him as far as they could. His cock was like a baguette! He was hot like flame, as hard as steel, yet with the smoothness of silk, and she stroked him. <laughs> like a legless dash hound jutting out of his pelvis. I apologize, there is no way that that is written in this book. There's just...
and she stroked him. Her rhythm matching his until with a startled cry, she exploded against his hand. Slade growled his triumph. He bent and kissed her, taking a soft moan, zoomed into his mouth, and then he drew back. He was relentless, moving himself back and forth against her until she was mindless with abandon. Then at last, at last, he entered her. And a cheer went up from the crowd nearby. She cried out as he began to move, pulling back slowly, then rocking forward, his hands beneath her, cupping her buttocks, lifting her to him. He caught her mouth with his, his tongue, duplicating the motions of his body. Come on, no one does that. Come with me, he whispered. Come with me, love. Come on, do a come. <laughs> Bryony gave herself up to him, riding his passion and making it hers. She shattered in his arms, bursting into a million pieces of sunlight, soaring up and up into the sky. Then slowly she drifted to earth, safe again in Slade's embrace. And they lived happily ever after. <laughs> 